What does it mean to be a Western ayahuasquero? So, you know, part of what I do is, is obviously, or part of my training has been to be exposed to ayahuasca. And, um, and ayahuasca today has become really kind of popular, I would say, in certain circles in the West. You know, lots, lots of people are talking about ayahuasca or want to participate in ayahuasca ceremony. And, and its use also has become very diverse, you know. In the way I was raised or I was introduced to ayahuasca is a kind of more traditional, if I might say, or more indigenous style, which is more from the Peruvian Amazon, where I lived for 10 years. And as a Westerner, uh, it's a bit of a cultural shock, you know, because we come with a very uh, established idea of, you know, religion or science or a certain perspective of life and a certain understanding of what's right and wrong or the good and the bad, you know. And um, uh, it takes a bit of time as a Westerner to kind of reinvent yourself in the world of ayahuasca, which is all about the existence of a spiritual world, the existence of consciousness within nature, uh, the capacity of interacting with that consciousness, or the idea of the language of nature, and your own capacity in altered state of consciousness using ayahuasca to tap into plant energy or plant spirit and establish a contact, you know, a relationship with that invisible energy that becomes real in an altered state of consciousness. So at the beginning, you, you, you kind of approach this work coming more from an illusion or the legendary aspects of all this tradition that has been fed into uh, the Western world, you know, and come more from the imaginative self. And then, after being exposed and building in your own body, in your own reality, what it means, it gets rooted and it becomes part of you. So you can uh, tap into it and relate into it, uh, you know, from, from a living experience. So as a Westerner, I think uh, it, it's particularly challenging to get exposed to the ayahuasca world because it's such a different culture. And um, it demands a long time of training and a dichotomy of the self and of the belief and um, how we look at the world because there's definitely an unconscious print coming from our education that is always there that you need to untie slowly. Only time allows you to do that. And then when you're able to do that and to transform it, you have kind of both aspects. You can tap, at, tap back into that Western context and cultural context, and you can also embrace this indigenous belief that is more, you know, animistic and create a bridge in between and interpret those data. So I guess the difficulty is that you lose a bit the, the identity of, you know, your Western world because you kind of deny or you reinvent your relationship with it, but you're never really an indigenous man because this is not where you were born. So you're kind of wandering between two worlds. Mm -hmm.